Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Maison Mission. Glad you're here. Take this time to find your place. Take a contemplative breath. Take a moment to unpack. We're talking about traveling light this week. Find some of that baggage that we carry around with us. And see if you can let go long enough to sing a song, lift your heart in worship, and sing with us. At this time, we'll invite you to stand and sing with us. This is 
As we step into the dark Oh, give us your heart Oh, give us your heart Let the light of heaven shine As we step into the dark Oh, give us your heart Oh, give us your heart All to see your kingdom come and death depart Oh, give us your heart 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 Let's bow our heads and pray Merciful Creator, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this season of Advent, during which time we await the coming of your birth. We hope that you will open up our hearts and help us open up our minds to the words that we hear today and help us to lift our voices loud in honor of your name, in your heavenly name, in your spirit. Amen. Good evening. I stood up here earlier and these lights still get me every single time. <laughs> All right, I wanna tell you, welcome. Uh, my name's Miranda, I'm the administrator here at Maison and Maison is a Greek word for greater. Maison mission is all about creating greater spaces for people to hear and experience the good news of Jesus. On the screen behind me in just a minute, you will see our digital connect card. It's a QR code, so if you'll scan that, you can send us prayer requests, you can sign up for things, or you can just tell us hi. You can tell us what you think about the service. Um, the next thing I want you to let you know about is Serve GNV. This Christmas Eve, we're doing something a little bit different. Okay, we're gonna flip the script and we are going to put together some bags to take out to some of the people who are working on Christmas Eve. Um, there's a collection out in the, do we call it the narthex still? In the area outside, the lobby, okay, the lobby. I grew up in church, sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're collecting some of the pint-sized water bottles, um, small chocolates, granola bars, candy canes, and I was told that some of the granola bars are BOGO this week at Publix, if you want to pick some of those up. Um, we're going to collect through next week, and then after that, we'll make sure we have all the items so we can put together our bags. We're looking at putting together maybe 300 bags to send out, to take out to some different places around town. Um, and then our next thing is giving. You can give online to maisonmission.com. You can also text to give. The number is 84321. And we also have some new giving boxes in the back if you want to drop a donation in that way. And then today we're going to continue in our Advent series. And our title is Travel Light. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. So, all right. How are we all doing? Good? good. We doing good? It's the holidays. Woo! Yeah, it's the holidays. It's, this is the time for joy and cheer. All right. So before we start, though, before we get all excited, I do want to just take a minute because I know it's been crazy with Thanksgiving last week. It was crazy for me Thanksgiving last week. I would like to just take a minute and just do some centering like exercise here. We're going to just breathe together because I know I'm pretty keyed up. And so it'd be really good to just breathe because I believe when we take these moments and we just kind of pause and we make space in our souls for God to speak to us, I think God does show up and say some really cool things. So if you would just close your eyes and if you feel comfortable, you can put your hands out in front of you. You don't have to do that, but just close your eyes. And we're honestly, we're just going to breathe together. So just one big breath in. And then out. 
and then in. And just let that air kind of fill your lungs and calm your spirit. All right, Lord, come speak. All right, that's good. It's good to do those things every once in a while. I think sometimes we're so busy and we're rushing and we're hurrying, which is what we're going to talk about today. We, worry, we hurry through things and we don't take time to just breathe, right? And so today we are continuing in the series Travel Light. Uh, it's talking about how we can unpack some of the baggage that I know all of us carry with us, especially uh, during the holidays. Last week we started this series by looking, how, looking at how distractions can keep us from uh, connecting to others. We also talked about how one of the remedies to that can be uh, serving others. When we serve others and we get outside of ourselves, we can find healing and we can find peace. Um, But this week, we're going to dive in a little bit deeper, and I want to start by asking this question. Or not. Is the question not there? Oh, there it is. Are you busy? How many people are busy? Are you busy? Yeah, I'm busy. I feel like I'm busy all the time, right? How many times have you been in a conversation when you start the conversation and someone says, how are you doing? And your answer isn't good or bad. It's busy. I'm busy, right? Everybody's busy. I'm good, but I'm busy. It's strange how all of us seem to be busy. Our schedules are cram-packed with every hour and minute filled with planned and unplanned controlled chaos. Um, Commuting to work, working, coming home, managing after-school activities with your kids if you have them, sports, theater, homework. Oh, man, homework, right? (laughs) I hated homework the first time I had to do it, and then they changed math. And now I have to do it all over again, right? (laughs) And when it's all over, at the end of the day, we collapse on the couch or in our bed and with nothing left in our tank, and then we get to do it all over again tomorrow. And let's just admit it, we are really busy. We're trying to get all the things done. And when we don't get all the things done, how do we feel? We feel like we failed. I know I do. We feel like... uh, like we've let people down in our lives around us. Uh, we feel guilty and sorry. And it's just that whole, ugh, I am the worst thing. And it, that just keeps us up at night. And most people think we just have to try harder and move faster, accomplish more, become more efficient because we still feel like we failed. So to do the th- we failed to do the things. So we're just going to try harder and move faster. We hurry through life a little quicker so we can do all the things and make everyone around us happy but not usually ourselves, right? Sometimes we use busyness as a way to validate ourselves. Um, It's boring to answer the how you're doing question with just good. If I'm busy, then that means I'm not lazy, right? And so the why of our busyness can come in many forms, but I came across this quote from Brene Brown and she said this, and I thought this was really, really good and it really hit me hard. Uh, Crazy busy is a great armor. It's a great way for numbing. What a lot of us do is that we stay so busy and so out in front of our life that the truth of how we're feeling and what we really need can't catch up with us. Oh man, that hit me real hard. And you know, as a sidebar, I just want to mention this um, and tell you how important self-care is. Um, My wife has been going through a huge life change this year. Back in May, she made a huge decision to make some big changes in her life. Um, And and one of those big things that she found was how important self-care is to love and care for herself and to make a greater space in her own life uh, to be fully present in the moment. It's been amazing to watch and and have a front row seat to someone else's transformation like that. But I want to also encourage you, it is very hard. It's very hard to make changes in your life. It's not easy to love yourself, especially when you've spent a lot of time believing that taking care of yourself is selfish. I know that's how I was raised, but you're worth it. You're worth it to make that time and make that greater space for yourself 
you're worth it, okay? Don't feel bad or guilty making healthy choices and setting boundaries and blocking out that time for yourself. That's a really good thing, okay? Sometimes we need to take things off the plate. Sometimes we need to take a step back and look at what we're doing and remove some of that busyness from our lives. You know, I've been reading this, this incredible book. It's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I highly recommend this one. It's really good. It's by this guy named John Mark Comer. It was recommended to me by my friend Matt Stanlin, who uh, is another musician in town. He's led worship here a couple times with us. But I finally started reading this. He's been recommending this book to me for like a year. I finally started reading it over uh, Thanksgiving break. And it's been incredibly timely for me. And, and, and what it's prompted me, oh, it's actually prompted me to want to talk about hurry. Um, there's a great line in the book. It's really simple. And it's just, God did not create hurry. In the first and second chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the writer shows us a beautiful picture of God's life-work balance. God's rhythm of life. And he intentionally includes a day of rest, a time to rejuvenate, a time to be still and to be present, not worrying about what's ahead of us or what's behind us, but instead to simply be mindful of the moment that we're in. The purpose of this is to be present. As God is present to us, if we rest in him, he asks us to slow down, to rest, and to abide in him, to be present with God as he is present to us. There's a verse in Matthew chapter 11. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Man, that passage hits so hard because when I read that, even as, as, as a young person, that was, that was the God I had pictured in my mind, but it wasn't the God that I ended up being taught about. I don't know if anybody had that experience. I wanted the God that was patient and kind and, 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 and it seemed like at every turn when I wanted that God, I was told that God was, was something else. It's a really powerful passage. Um, and the reason why that is, by the way, why the world has infiltrated um, even our faith, because the world isn't interested in rest. We know this is true because of how we live our lives and what we are told to value we may not realize it, but our subliminal need for hurry is baked in to our lives. Think about it for a minute. What is valued most in the world? What are the markers of success all around us? Efficiency, productivity, growth, making it happen, closing the deal. And once we make that big score or finish out that campaign on top, we are allowed to celebrate for about five minutes and then we have to do it again, only better, right? That's how the world works. Now, we only have to do it faster, more efficiently than last time. It seems that many of us can be unintentionally driven by one word, more. Now, I'm not saying that all of these things are bad. Um, getting better and more productive isn't a bad thing. But the problem is that we can easily get sucked into a false narrative about who we are, about our own value and our own worth. No, <clears throat> who we are isn't just about what we can produce or how fast we can make things happen. Our value and our identity are rooted more in who we are than what we do, amen? We're human beings, not human doings. God created us to be with God long before he ever asked us to do things for him. You're created to abide in God. The phenomenon of hurry culture really came about during the, uh, recently during the modern age. Advances in, in commerce and productivity were aided by technological advances, planes and automobile travel, automation and manufacturing. Computers have advanced to the point where they're in the palm of everybody's hand now. How many of you, how many of you have gone to Disney World? You've gone to Disney World? How, how many of you have been on the, the carousel of progress? 
right? There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow, right? Um, Walt Disney was probably one of the biggest progressive thinkers of his day, but he envisioned a future where technology would create more leisure time for people. He didn't fear that an automated future would crash our economy like, like many people do now. Instead, he believed that it would create new margins for people to be able to travel and enjoy and rest and create. And I love that. I love that vision of the future. But unfortunately, it seems that our world wants the opposite to be true. Instead of technology creating more margin for us, it's freed us up to only work harder and be more and more productive. Instead of recognizing that enough really could be enough, we push and we push and we push, either by choice or by demand, to produce results. And we want those results to arrive faster and faster. Speed is now the new landscape for efficiency. You know what they say, time is money. Faster is always better, and slow is for losers. Um, When my son was like three years old, he was obsessed with the movie Cars. Do you remember the movie Cars with Lightning McQueen? And the movie starts with, with McQueen. He's in his trailer, and he's giving himself the pep talk. He's like, I am speed, faster than fast, quicker than quick. I am lightning. Man, you guys are not, are you, are you guys with me on this? <laughs> yeah, Cars, right? Cartoon? Okay, good. Just a little laughter. It helps me know that you're there, because I can't see you with these lights. But uh, Lightning McQueen, I just always want, I always wanted him to do the Owen Wilson, wow, you know, but he never did it. All right, so fast is good, slow is bad. Our world is built on a foundation of hurry up. Or maybe, uh, maybe you'll feel this statement, if I only had a little more time. The thing is that God, most of the time, moves slow. He's patient. He's never forceful or aggressive. In the Gospels, Jesus was rarely, if ever, in a hurry. In John 11, we read about the death of Jesus' friend, Lazarus. Jesus is away with his disciples, but the word reaches him that Lazarus is sick. But he waits a couple days before getting the crew back together to go back to Judea where Lazarus was. And by the time Jesus got there, because it was so far away, Lazarus had been dead for four days. People are mourning, they're grieving. Mary was even a little ticked off at Jesus saying, if you'd only been here, maybe Lazarus wouldn't have died. But Jesus in that moment, he doesn't rush to the next thing. He doesn't rush to the healing. He doesn't look beyond the moment he's in. He recognizes that people are weeping. And in, in John eleven thirty five, 35, the shortest passage of the Bible, it says that Jesus wept. He mourns with those who mourn. He makes space for himself in that moment to be fully with the people that he's with. Jesus was present. As the story continues, Jesus raises Lazarus from the grave and as, as one of the most public and powerful miracles. But, but isn't it fascinating that God gets what God wants without rushing to the finish line? He's not forcing anything to happen. Instead, he's allowing himself to experience all of the moments. Maybe that's the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach us. Maybe we need to be present, just like Jesus is present in those moments. You know, I mentioned this last week that that love, loving is the greatest commandment, to love God and to love others. Love is more than an action, though. To do, love is be- to do love is different than to be love. The same can be said about joy and peace. Joy can be a feeling, but, but being joyful isn't necessarily a verb. And peace is the same way. In, in this ruthless elimination of hurry book, um, I love how the author says this. He says, love, joy, and peace are the foundational pieces of the kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. These things are at the heart of all God is trying to grow in the soil of your life. The upside down kingdom is the upside down kingdom of God is backwards to everything that we know about the world. I want to close by making a confession to you all, but 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 also a challenge. Um, 
Because every sermon that I write is really more for me than anybody else. Um, you know, I took a week off uh, over the Thanksgiving break to visit some family in Virginia, and, and, and I purposely didn't bring my laptop on the trip because I wanted to really try to unplug and not worry about work. And, and even though there was a lot to do, I wanted to try to practice the work-life balance boundary and, and, and be fully present with my family on the holiday, right? Well, I just want you to know that didn't really go well for me, okay? Um, Even without my computer, I was able to find ways to distract myself on my phone and escape uncomfortable interactions with family. I wasn't uh, completely disconnected, but I definitely leaned into my distracted nature to find escape instead of being present. You know, TikTok is a hell of a drug, man. Let me tell you, it's nuts. Um, but, But there was one moment that I want to tell you about that made all the difference. The day after Thanksgiving, we're at my in-laws and we're setting up the Christmas tree and starting to decorate. Uh, and my, my in-laws have two Christmas trees. They have like uh, the fun tree, which is like the Christmas tree like that everybody would have. But then they have like the Jesus Christmas tree that has like all like the churchy stuff on it. I don't know. It's a thing. But, um, <laughs> you know, f- for most of the week, I-, I stared at my phone in the corner avoiding interaction. I looked over at my kids and I realized that they were all doing the same thing. <laughs> They're all just looking at their phones or watching TV, wanting to be anywhere else. But as I helped to get the trees up and we pulled the boxes out from the attic, I started to realize that I was the one who was setting the tone for the rest of my family. I was, in a sense, giving them permission to escape just like I was. And it was something, something like clicked in me, like, like, like when the Grinch's heart grows three times its size at the end of where the, when the Grinch stole Christmas, right? I realized in that moment, I don't have to avoid it. Um, I can choose to be present. And so what I did was <laughs> I pulled up my favorite Spotify Christmas playlist and I started goofily dancing through the room, singing Christmas songs, trying to get the attention of my kids. And slowly... About three songs in, I had everyone up, hanging ornaments, singing along to every word of Last Christmas with me. It was a moment that we shared and a memory that we got to make together as a family, a memory that would have been missed if I hadn't stopped rushing through the moment with my own distractions. And I know that something broke inside of me that day because I realized that being present in the moment is all that matters. You know, this is the second week of Advent. Appropriately, this week is the week of peace. One of the expectations of Jesus coming was the expectation of peace, peaceful living, peaceful relationships with others, peaceful rest with God where we abide in him. You know, maybe we don't always need a distraction. Maybe we don't always need to hurry Maybe we don't always need to rush around. Maybe there isn't always something to do. Maybe God is in this moment with us, inviting us into it, pleading with us to abide, rest, and joy, and simply be with him. Would you stand up? I'm going I'm to pray in just a minute, but would you stand up? I, 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 I don't want to rush past this moment, and this isn't in my notes, but like when I was praying before, uh, the service, I just was like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to rush past this moment. I don't want to let the busyness and the rush uh, of, of, of this moment to, to pass by us. And what I want to do is I want to just challenge you, like, just like what we were saying earlier is like, like, listen, like when I lead worship, if any of you guys know me and you've seen me lead worship, almost always I say something to the effect of, God, we're not asking you to come into this moment. We're just wanting our eyes to be open to the fact that you're already here. You're already doing something. You're already speaking. You're already present. We're the ones who have to open our eyes. We're the ones who have to step into the moment that he invites us into. And so I want to just challenge you this evening before we continue the Christmas rush, before we rush off to do all these other things. And I just want to, I want to just encourage you and challenge you, take a minute to be present, to let those distractions just get pushed to the background and to be fully present with God as he is fully present with you. Because I think that those moments are everything. 
I, be- I know this is crazy, but I believe that God speaks. I believe that God is moving and he's doing things all around us. But the thing is, we don't see them because we're moving so fast and we're doing all these other things. Sometimes we just slow down and we're like, God, what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're saying? What are the things that you want to show me? And just by praying those simple prayers, like crazy stuff starts to happen because not because those things like mad, it's not magic. It's because we took the time to slow down enough to see it. Isn't that good? So let's pray. We're just, we're just going to pray. God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, with your grace, with the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to come and to help us be present with you, just as you are present to us. Lord, sometimes we're so busy. Sometimes we're in such a hurry that we miss the moments that you are here, that you're, you've prepared for us to step into with you. And so, God, I pray that with intention, Lord, and with, with, with every fiber of our being from the top of our head to the bottom of our toes, Lord, that you would come and that you would help us to be present with you, Lord, that you would encourage us, that you would draw us in to your presence. God, because we can't be honest, we can't do the hard stuff, we can't do the the self-care and the life change and all those things if we're moving so fast that we can't see you. And so God, help us. Your grace comes to empower us to do the things that we can't do in our own strength. And so God, I pray that your strength would be enough, that you would come, that you would empower us, that you would be present. Lord, that we would see you, that we would know you better. And Lord, that through those encounters with you, through seeing the things that you are doing spiritually or in us and around us, Lord, that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. God, we thank you. We love you. We worship you tonight. In your name, amen. Yeah. 
rides on Sinai's height In ancient times didst give the law In cloud and majesty Church, would you stand and worship with us? So, so good 
have just a few announcements before you leave. If you haven't gotten plugged into a house church already, we'd really love for you to plug into a house church. Maison's Rhythm's different. We meet here together twice a month, and then we meet in house churches the other two times a month. And it's really where you build the community. So if you're not plugged into a house church and you want to be, come see me, talk to Kevin. We'll get you plugged in. Ask somebody where they go. I bet they'd love to bring you with them. Um, After this meal, after this service, we're having a meal. So we'd love for you to stick around and hang out. Um, The Thompsons made ham, and I saw a big crock pot of macaroni and cheese and some green beans. So it should be really good. And I am so glad you guys were able to be here, and I hope you have a fantastic week. We will be back here together in two weeks on December 18th. And we look forward to seeing you then. Have a great night.